Good morning and welcome to Gana Short. Today's presentation is all about the web MTech on ammunition technology for service officers, which has been offered by IIT Madras, about which I've also put it out in the WhatsApp group. I'm taking this step of giving you a briefing to clarify a lot of ideas because I've got some tremendous response and people have genuine uh, queries. Let me clarify any, everything so that people can apply uh, with a lot of clarity. And if they have or any queries, you're welcome to get back to me. Right. It has been my, uh, you know, conviction that if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. This entire process of web M tech and on ammunition technology is part of that idea. If all goes well, we should get past ammunition technology into weapon technology and other issues. But that's a later day story. But today's start is this. Uh, a few months back, I put out an article called Fishing for Ammunition Technology in, uh, you know, Financial Express. You'll find the same thing on my Gunnershot uh, website. Go into it, search for it, and you'll get this article. Go through it because it will give you an idea. Uh, at the outset, I'd like to mention that we are in the process uh, of establishing CARD. What is CARD? Center for Ammunition Research and Development in IIT Madras. The whole idea is three tiered. In the top tier, you have user nodes at Army, Navy, Air Force. We are in the process of establishing them or uh, you know, attempting to do so. The bottom is the industry sales, both PSU and private in the process of establishing contact with them. In the center, if you see on the left, you're going to we're going to get into uh, equations with the research and development establishments all over the country, other IITs, DRDO labs, everything. The right is the academic programs, and this is what this web MTech is going to lead to, and where we're going to have the academic program for the, so for the services, industry, and DPSU. I. I'm quite convinced that we will not make headway unless we make our own designs and you know have our own knowledge about it. Whether we make the right QRs or not, based on available technologies and what is feasible, is how we the way forward. I'm also convinced that you don't need the best technology to win wars. The best technology to win a war is what wins you the war, and that is consistent with what our terrain offers us and our innovativeness and how we handle the technology. If technology was also prevalent, Taliban wouldn't have prevailed over USA or Ukraine wouldn't have held off against Russia. We have to have our own technology to do what we want to do with our adversaries on our battlefield. Right. What am I looking at when I talk of the Center of Ammunition Research and Development? We're looking at precision guidance. We're looking at lethality, enhancing lethality of ammunition. We are looking at extending range. We're looking at intelligence, intelligent ammunition. And we're also looking at import substitution because a lot of our ammunition is based is foreign ammunition. It's just aging off and you need to extend it. So when you talk of ammunition technology, it is not one. It's an amalgam of all. You're going to get a whole lot of technologies which will make ammunition technology a success. Or rather, which will, right? And they're going to be spin-offs into others also. So we shouldn't be single-minded thinking that ammunition technology is narrow. It's broad-based. OK. I had put this across in that article. What all academic programs and ammunition technology we're going to put? Fundamentally, without going running through the whole thing, we are looking at uh, online MTech courses in ammunition technology, uh, the way we put it out. Then we are looking at regular courses to be conducted as part of either study leave 
or officers who are doing courses in IITs to come and do uh, ammunition technology courses uh, in IITs. And the whole idea is if this proliferates, other IITs can take on other subjects and we can have centers of excellence and expertise in, you know, in various IITs. It's a long-term program of which this is the first step, right? Then we are looking at, uh, you know, eventually graduating to PhD programs. And we are also open to the fact that IIT Madras will come and have academic interaction uh, with various schools of uh, instruction. We already done something in School of Artillery. We regularly go to the NDC. In fact, next month I'm going there. Uh, as also, we've reached out to the Army War College and spoken to them uh, during COVID and before, as also once we have spoken to the Naval High Command. And we want to expand this engagement with all our premier institutions and class A establishments so that our technology base in the country goes up and there's a connect between the academia, the premier academia in the nation and our institutions and the armed forces. Okay, let's get to the specifics of this, uh, uh, you know, web mtech which we have put out. Uh, yeah, this is what it is all about. Mtech in aerospace engineering and Mtech in ammunition technology is what we put out. Mtech in ammunition technology is also Mtech in aerospace with ammunition technology specialization. When you talk of uh, ammunition technology and uh, aerospace, please remember there are missiles and all. Uh, you know, guided weapons and everything also is part of aerospace. So what is this going to have, be all about? It's going to be interactive virtual classrooms at IIT Madras. And, uh, you know, it's going to be, it's not a correspondence course as some people believe. It's going to be a live program, right? And this is what we had learned during the COVID period where we conducted all our uh, regular courses online. And in fact, we've already running a web mtech program for a year. And we've had this experience. Now we are taking it one step forward. It, there are going to be live online classes. But all these lectures will be recorded and made available to students for reference so that they know what has been taught if they are not able to catch it at that point of time. And there'll also be online interaction, right? with a dedicated bandwidth network set up by Center for Continuing Education at IIT Madras. We already have the infrastructure in place and where organization and the organization where students are working. Okay, next, what is the selection process? It includes a mandatory qualifying online exam, right? You can have a look at the syllabus. You go to the you know, link which I sent to everyone and you can have a look at it. And if you have any queries, Put it out to webmtech at ae.iitm.ac.in. AE is aerospace engineering. Right. Uh, the candidates, as we have put out, should possess a bachelor's degree in aerospace, civil, chem com chemical, computer, science, electrical, mechanical, elect metallurgical, naval architecture, whatever you. A BTEC degree. Because I've got some queries from some officers. Say, Sir, we've done uh, BTEC in Electrical engineering, can I apply? Yes, you can. Or electronics, yeah, please. We, are, we want people to do electronics and do this course because that's how you'll get guidance systems. Precision ammunition, you need electronics. Okay, or the other alternative is master's degree, mathematics, chemistry, stroke weapon technology or equivalent. Why I have said weapon technology or equivalent? I know the LGSE, which is being conducted by artillery and the air defense, leads to a weapon technology course. The TSOC officers who do their course at Millet do get a thing on, uh, I think, military technology from Pune University. So all these people are eligible. That's why I said equivalent and kept a leeway for everyone to uh, you know, go through the course. And of course, bachelor's degree in science with master's degree in defense studies through DSSC. We'll accept them. In fact, we want our future leaders who have done staff college and who, who holds higher staff appointment and command appointment 
to be technically qualified. We will give preference to them provided they meet all the requirements and they come in the right focus. Okay, the beauty about this course which we have designed, there's no loss of manpower, no study leave, nothing. You do everything from your units where you are. Right? Those working in industry and research labs can enhance their knowledge and skills and earn an additional degree for industry and research labs, read units or establishments. Right? We want to reach out to a larger fraction of those working in aerospace organizations. For long, we have kept us, the armed forces, out of this. The Air Force is all about aerospace. The Navy has a substantial amount of aerospace in its naval aviation or in the missiles which are on board ships. So is the Army. As you want to go to a independent rocket force which is being spoken of. There is no relo relocation for higher education. You can do it wherever you want. If you shift from one unit to the other, we will enable it. There is no problem. You have to cope with it. Right. What are the program modalities? There will be an hour's lecture every evening on a working day. There will be one hour tutorial per week. Or rather, one tutorial per week. Not one hour one tutorial per week for all core courses. Now, a year we'll have three trimesters, okay, of 15 weeks each. Each officer will have to do two courses per trimester. There'll be two personal interaction with faculty in each course. You'll have to come to IIT Madras or work out the modality as to how to do this, right? Inputs will be taken from students and the organization to shortlist electives from a basket. We'll offer a basket of electives, which gives you the freedom to pursue you know, studies and research in the field you want. There'll be a one-year project. Any problem of interest to the organization with some academic content. My idea is officers who do this should be able to design futuristic ammunition. And we'll help you do that. And if we help you do that and you help the army, we all help each other. When I say the army, it's army, navy, and the air force. Now, project guidance can be from within the organization or, or by the faculty. You can choose people with whom you want, you have confidence who can guide you. The whole idea is output, not the input, not the process. The whole aim is five years, 10 years from now, we should know how to catch our own fish and eat it. But we'll evaluate it as part of our IATM process. There are no laboratory courses as against the regular uh, MTEX. Because we feel that officers who attend these courses have sufficient experience. You don't need laboratory experience. Right? If you want to do any experiments, everything, we'll help you do it here. There's no problem, right? Lab credits will be replaced by uh, tutorial credits to encourage classroom problem solving. We'll work out the modalities. Don't worry, right? Your project can be at parent company or public organization. If guidance is required by any faculty, we'll have to work out the whole thing and we'll do it as a consultancy project for industry. And for the armed forces, there's no problem. We are flexible. Just like you feel new, we are also new. My entire faculty is new. We are just three armed forces officers in the aerospace department. Self, General Rajiv Narayanan and Admiral George. We are helping these faculty who have developed an association with the armed forces over the past four or five years since I've been here. They are quite conversant with what the uh, armed forces officers are. And many of them have been guides and teaching armed forces officers. We are also new. You are also new. This is a new journey. It's a new path. Let's get on to it. Okay. What will be a typical trimester activity? You know, in six weeks, online contact, one lecture session of 75 minutes per day. Okay. And you can see all this, two lecture sessions per week per course. That means almost four or five days will be there. right? We'll have one week buffer to make up for lost classes or your visit to IITM. And you know the whole idea is to catch up. 
right we will have one week buffer to make up for lost uh, classes right so we will have a lot of activity we will design uh, you know all this at your convenience right i do understand there will be problems initially there will be teething troubles for us that's okay What is the timeline for the current academic uh, calendar? Test and selection by April, but on 15th April, please submit your uh, applications. You will get due code, due time for uh, you know the test. It will be a very simple test. Let me assure you this. You need to know the basics. We also need to know we are getting the best out of the system. Administration registration will be by August. Academic year, the first trimester will start in September, September, October to December, right? And so on. Okay, right. The next thing, this is the web-enabled MTech program of the Department of Aerospace Engineering and IIT Madras. Like I said, there are two programs, uh, Aerospace Engineering and Aerospace Engineering with Ammunition Technology. You can opt for both. Right, cutoff date, like I've said, 15th April is what we have put out. So, by 15th April, bung in your applications. You can always withdraw them if you want later, but go through the process. What are the course brief again giving you a summary of the whole thing? The degree is identical to that awarded to regular students at IITM, there's no difference. Don't think this is a concession course, this is not we are going to ring the hell out of you. To ensure that you get this degree, you have to work hard, right? You have to look, be forward-looking. Yeah, the content of the course will change because what we're going to teach you is going to be far different from what we teach young students who join MTech or PhD initially. It's a three-year program against the normal two-year regular program, right? Two courses per trimester, and you'll get a certificate of completion for each course. So within the three years, you'll get a lot of certificates for whatever course content you have completed. The degree requirement is six core courses, okay, five electives and one project. Electives you choose. Project you choose. One hour lecture every evening. Intensive tutorials based learning to ensure grasping of concepts. And scheduled personal interaction with faculty twice a trimester. So twice you'll have to make it convenient to come to IIT, we can design everything out. This is not a free course. This is not a freebie. You have to work hard. But at the end of the hard work, on your own, you are an MTech in ammunition technology, which is something, a new journey we are starting in India. Right. If there's any doubt, please contact Professor Samin. This is uh, his address, Samin at smail.iitm.ac.in the other alternatives get in touch with me service officers anytime i'm open i've already got a lot of queries a lot of people are ringing me up i'm going to patiently go through it don't worry right why am i doing all this over the past one year two years i have quite convinced that the military technologies of this century are these 12 Right, And part of the whole thing, when you talk of AI, you talk of cyber, you talk of robotics, unmanned systems, and additive manufacturing, all these contribute, semiconductors, all these contribute to tomorrow's warfare. And all these have a linkage with ammunition technology. And there's a larger issue. Unless we as an armed force are up on this, we have a problem. Other armed forces have gone, you know, way ahead of the loop. And our knowledge base on this, when I interact with a lot of people, senior officers, junior officers, and middle level officers, especially those who are dealing with these technologies in various institutions, where in the procurement process, and what have you, knowledge base is weak or understanding is weak. I can keep cribbing about the whole lot, but I am not of that variety. I want 
people to know these the fundamentals after that you can uh, you know take off on your knowledge uh, trip so that's why i started this process where self and major general rajiv narayanan who was the adgmo right and who retired from that position both of us are going through these on the youtube and these are available to you on the youtube and this is under a playlist called you know military technologies of this century we have covered all these subjects if you subscribe to gunner shot on the website and on the youtube you will get these uh, videos to you on your uh, you know every day on as a notification and i'm going to cover not only these i'm going to go beyond this into all technologies which we can think of so you understand what it is these are the things which i already done i have spoken of we have spoken of battlefield energy we have spoken of how what will be the interaction between academia and uh, you know technology and the armed forces we have spoken of space capsule we have done we have covered the balloon business we have covered ai we have covered cyber security now all these and more will contribute not only to enhancing your knowledge but it will also help those people who are appearing for staff college and other competitive exams to understand military technology from the basics right and then like i said earlier you can take off whichever direction you want it will also help those who are in the procurement process to understand not only those fundamental technologies but also educate your civilian counterparts in the mod in the dpsus and in drdos to understand how all this technology fits into a battlefield that's the second aim we are not doing all this technology for the sake of technology but it has to fit into a framework right this is all i have had to convey to you those of you who are appearing for the uh, web mtech or applying for it please do so it will do good for you and for the organization it will bring our iits closer to the armed forces it will help the armed forces take off in a particular direction later on it will help you to relocate into the industry also so a lot of benefit and good education is never a loss i'll end this broadcast with only this message once again if you give a man a fish you feed him for a day if you teach a man to fish you feed him for a lifetime i am trying to teach all of us including me to fish so that we can feed ourselves for a lifetime thank you and jai hind